Good afternoon, Dr. Dinesh. Good, sir. Good, up, good, uh, good, good morning. <laughs> good morning. It's still morning, sir. Yes. Still morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, still morning. So, yeah, by the time I, uh, I will be finishing my presentation, it will be uh, not only noon, but afternoon. And so <laughs> <laughs> we wait for a few participants. It was around okay. So yeah, 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 sure, sure. We wait for five minutes and then we'll start, sir. Sure. Okay. During the presentation, should I uh, keep my camera on or uh, I can go blind? I mean, it's up to you, sir. If you can keep your camera on, it would be better. Okay, okay, good. You know, so that they can have a feel of physical appearance. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay.
we wait for two more minutes sir at 11:40 we will start sir right all right sir yes Okay, so good morning once again to all the participants and uh, we are in the now second lecture of uh, this STTP. The next expert is Dr. Dinesh Kumar, who is a very good friend of mine and he is working as an associate professor in computer engineering department at our university. To tell you brief about him, uh, uh, Dr. Dinesh Kumar completed his Bachelor of Technology in Electrical Engineering from IIT Kanpur in 2002 and PhD in Information Science and Technology from University of Coimbra, Portugal in June 2015. And after his bachelor degree, he worked as a research associate at IIT Kanpur for nearly one year. And then after, he worked at University of Barcelona, Spain for over one year as a researcher in European Union sponsored project, where he supported methods to interpret and analyze seismological data. And later, he joined Adaptive Commutation Group of the Center of, for Information System of University of Coimbra, CISUC, to work under project My Heart in July 2004. Uh, next, sir. Then he managed many research published paper and well-known conference and journals and respective research field. And being a full-time research in Europe, he worked in various research projects funded by European Union and Portuguese Science and Technology Foundation. Currently, he's an associate professor at our university, AI and Big Data Department. And his recent areas of research are machine learning, adaptive signal processing, time frequency representation of signals for conditioning monitoring of machines and human. He has supervised five master students and supervised three PhD students 
predominantly uses MATLAB, R, and Python in his research work to implement algorithm for analysis tool. So we have a wonderful personality with us, Dr. Dinesh Kumar. So we welcome you, sir, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Siddharth. Yeah, it was a nice. Uh, uh, am I okay? I'm, I'm sharing my screen first. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I I assume I'm I'm well heard and uh, my screen is also visible to all for Yes, sir. Okay. So having said that, first I would uh, like to thank you, sir, Dr. Siddharth for uh, giving me uh, giving my introduction so thorough and uh, uh, um, you know so eloquently. Um, I. Uh, We'll be talking about artificial intelligence coming back to the uh, session. I will be talking about artificial intelligence, uh, fundamentals and application. So uh, my uh, introduction has already been uh, made. Before I uh, go to uh, other slides, the subsequent slides, I would like to um, do a disclaimer that uh, about uh, the images and uh, some of the contents which were taken from various open source places. I, uh, it was difficult to, uh, to um, highlight uh, every source of information which uh, uh, was taken in this uh, uh, slide. So uh, this disclaimer, uh, I believe, would be sufficient. Okay, and uh, I would also like to acknowledge here Dr. Gupta Gurg, who was uh, heading a project on uh, leading India AI, the uh, artificial intelligence project, uh, sponsored by government of India some years ago. Uh, that project is still goes on, uh, and we were part of uh, that project. So he uh, had given one uh, workshop here on deep learning, the new emerging field of artificial intelligence, and some of uh, uh, the slides which were presented by him in that uh, workshop, I did. Uh, borrow uh, that for this presentation, this presentation. Okay, so uh, uh, my introduction was uh, already given. This was my university where I was uh, doing my PhD. I, I did use artificial intelligence for uh, medical diagnosis. Essentially my research area is on healthcare and to be more specific on uh, diagnostic uh, system. So but during my PhD, I, I did uh, develop one diagnostic system based on signals acquired from human body. And one of the signals was uh, heart sound, ECG is called, uh, phonocardiogram. This is uh, essentially heart uh, sound. Okay. Uh, the heart beats and it produces sound. So we were uh, collecting data from heart. And uh, ECG, electrocardiogram, some of you probably are uh, familiar with this signal. Okay, most of, uh, you know, when we visit doctor and doctor prescribe, doctor, uh, doctors write to go for test and uh, sometimes it may be ECG. So uh, using these two signals, uh, I uh, developed a diagnostic system for certain cardiac uh, disease. So I, I did uh, use artificial intelligence tools and techniques for this purpose. So uh, presentation flow going to include a definition. I will be talking about the artificial intelligence definition, followed by history and focus, history of artificial intelligence. Uh, some of uh, the milestones uh, will be highlighted there, we'll be talking about. And the all of a sudden, why artificial intelligence is the center of uh, attention. It's, it's more focused. Okay, so we'll be talking about that. Uh, what are the applications of artificial intelligence? What are the areas of applications? So since uh, I assume that most of the audience 
are from civil engineering background. So um, I will be talking about obviously some applications related to civil engineering, but uh, the artificial intelligence techniques and the concepts which will be talking about, which will be talked about uh, in this presentation, in this session, you can withdraw uh, information that can be used for your problem, even if I'm not touching that problem here in this presentation. So you are familiar with the problems in your domain. So you can, uh, you can get information given here. So um, obviously as the title goes, fundamentals, some of the basics of artificial intelligence, I will be telling here. Examples, how those uh, artificial intelligence uh, techniques can be implemented, can be applied, and uh, applying for a simple problem. Okay, I will not be talking uh, here on a complex problem because time, is, time does not permit to talk about complex problems. So I will be giving uh, some simple examples where these techniques can be implemented. And uh, at the end, I will be introducing some software tools which uh, are essential to learn artificial intelligence concepts and also implement for your problem, regardless of the domain and, and, and area one individual can, uh, can involve in. So, um, gradually, uh, let's go into artificial intelligence. So before uh, we talk about artificial intelligence, uh, let's uh, dwell upon the word intelligence. Okay, we um, are intelligent people. Uh, I believe most of the uh, uh, audience are intelligent. Uh, most of us have some degree of some quotient of intelligence but that allows us to think, to take some decisions. Uh, decision may go wrong or right, but uh, when it goes uh, wrong, uh, okay. When it goes right, then of course you uh, you get reward, uh, you get your job done, uh, you get some benefit advantage. Uh, and when it goes wrong, of course you learn from your mistakes. So uh, intelligence uh, is uh, is not to make no mistake. Okay, if we go by this uh, definition given by a poet, a German poet. Uh, Bartlow Birchett, he uh, says that intelligent, intelligence is not to make no mistake, but quickly to understand how to make them good. So uh, of course you, your intelligence permits to take decision on, on different juncture in your life, but if you learn from a mistake and, 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 and come out uh, with a solution to fix that, okay, that, that's how your intelligence works. So intelligence is a part of internal environment that shows through at the interface between person and external environment as a function of cognitive task demand. So this is a heavy uh, psychological definition of intelligence. taking intelligent decision problem on for the query that you give to the machine, then machine has received some intelligence. So a similar intelligence, what we possess, what human or to some extent animal possess, okay, those uh, quotient of intelligence, if given to machine, machine is now artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, is usually defined as a science of making computers to do things that require intelligence when done by human. And AI is the study of ideas that enables computers to be intelligent. Oh, 
Okay, so by deep down, I'm giving machine an intelligence. Okay, obviously you will require some hardware and software. Okay, you need hardware. Okay, and uh, you need a program, computer program. So there will be an interface between uh, software and hardware. Okay, and that's how machine will uh, give some output that you that you wish for. So artificial intelligence deep down is a collection of algorithms, a collection of programs, uh, methods, methodologies. It, it is a super set, it, it is a big set of methodologies. And if uh, we see this chart, okay, artificial intelligence is It's a big superset here, okay, that contains machine learning. And then if we go a little uh, deeper, we get deep learning. So artificial intelligence is not a new phenomenon as, as we may think like, because uh, uh, artificial intelligence is given much of hype because of its potential. Some of the potential we will see in in incoming slides. So artificial intelligence is not a new phenomenon. It has been since 1950 and, and even older, we will see the history of AI in, in, in two minutes. So it, it is from 1950s. Okay, so artificial intelligence uh, his, uh, history or the story goes back from 1950. And a lot of uh, methods, have been developed ever since. And in 1980, uh, a different class of method started emerging in the field of artificial intelligence that can be grouped as machine learning. And in the early 20th century, 21st century, about uh, 2010, within the machine learning, there is a special class of algorithms or the methods started coming out. Those can be grouped as deep learning. So artificial intelligence by definition, you can say any technique that enables computers to mimic human intelligence. Now it may use machine learning algorithms, machine learning methods, and it may use deep learning methods. But machine learning, the second machine learning, now machine learning, if okay, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. So machine learning is um, a group of or a set of algorithms which is rather new okay, than the traditional artificial intelligence method. Traditional some search algorithms which artificial intelligence uh, domain had until some years. Okay. So. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence, AI, short form, that includes abstruse statistical techniques, techniques okay, that uses the statistical techniques that enable machines to improve at task with experience. So it uses statistical techniques to learn the behavior of the data, behavior of the, uh, of the um, information, that is used for AI application. It tries to learn from the data available or from the past experience. Data available means the past experience. And uh, the category includes deep learning. So it also includes deep learning. Deep learning started emerging uh, sometime around 2010, as I said. It has a special class of algorithms that essentially uses artificial neural network. So artificial neural network is brain or a neuro inspired algorithms, which uh, is able to uh, deal with large amount of data and also has capacity to solve complex problems due to its certain um, property, which we will Okay, see in subsequent slides. So artificial intelligence is nothing but um, a computational method. 
okay, you can understand uh, like this. Computational methods are the methods which use, which require computer to do calculation. We do calculation with pen and paper, but if you are using the same calculation with computer, that will be computer. Now in computer, computational method, we can make categories and one of the category is computational intelligence. Now computer, computer, in computational intelligence, if we would bifurcate computational intelligence further, we will group artificial intelligence and nature inspired. So artificial intelligence is bio inspired uh, algorithm. Again, like machine learning, we just saw the and expert system, uh, artificial neural network. These are uh, in the group of artificial intelligence. And in computational intelligence, there are another group, which, another group of algorithms which are nature inspired. For instance, evolutionary algorithm on colony, particle swarm, artificial immune system, etc. So um, we have so many algorithms, but artificial intelligence, again, is because of this machine learning and deep learning for last uh, 15, 20 years. Again, it is um, in focus of attention among uh, researchers. So uh, this, we see the history of artificial intelligence. Okay. So the history of artificial intelligence, uh, I guess we say okay, it may begin from 1950, but essentially, you know, it goes back to 1642. Okay. So some of the milestones happened in past century, which uh, gives, which gave uh, artificial intelligence boom. Now, artificial intelligence uh, formally formally began sometime around 1955, when uh, John McCarthy, uh, the person who coined this word artificial intelligence, and he developed a computer language called Prolog, uh, called um, Lisp, which uh, was used to develop expert system. Expert system is a kind of system which also thinks you can you can interpret like that. So even if uh, it does not have uh, something which is under the program, it can give you a uh, different result. It can understand, okay, it can give you. So it, the information that you can, uh, you, you can think that an intelligent person only can give. So some uh, intelligence is given in an expert system. But um, here in 1950, Alan Turing was a mathematician and computer scientist who developed a Turing machine. Okay. Um, uh, he, he came up with an experiment which uh, was done uh, here, you can see Turing test, in which uh, machine was, uh, was given some question along with uh, human and the interrogator, the question, the person who was giving questions to, uh, to the computer and and, and human, uh, has to guess that in which uh, which answers um, are coming from computer. And this this interrogator uh, was confused. Okay, so uh, many times interrogator uh, got got a computer to be a, a, a human. So but, but this the computer was giving answers, giving uh, response uh, like, like human uh, gives with, uh, with this uh, intelligence. The uh, other milestone or major breakthrough happened in 1997. In 1997, here when um, IBM, uh, one one computer company, came up with uh, one program called Deep Blue. Okay, that was playing with the then grandmaster uh, Gary Kasparov and his computer uh, won. That 
Gary Kasparov, who was a world chess champion back in 1997. So uh, then um, artificial intelligence started again, you know, gaining, gaining attention. And back in uh, 2011, another uh, incident happened when, uh, when one computer was uh, part of a quiz show called Jeopardy in, in the state. Here you can see uh, there is uh, a content a, a contestant, so a machine as a contestant, and his name is Watson. And that quiz show was won by computer. So another other contestant uh, lost. So uh, again, uh, uh, it was believed that you know, human uh, human uh, can be bet can be beaten by by machine if machine is programmed in in a sophisticated program. So um, again, in, in 2014 around, you know, deep learning started, machine learning and deep learning started. So uh, it has been in the discussion, in the research uh, attention. Uh, so uh, because of this machine learning and deep learning, artificial intelligence is being talked about is being applied in various uh, domains, we will uh, see now. Uh, before we go specific to the domain uh, or the kind of problem we uh, can solve with artificial intelligence uh, techniques, in fact, uh, some of the usage, some of the use of artificial intelligence techniques, okay? Uh, when we say artificial intelligence, we will essentially focus on machine learning because artificial intelligence is, is huge. Okay, it has a, a group of algorithms. We will essentially talking about machine learning and deep learning. Okay, so these two subsets of artificial intelligence. So uh, some of uh, the applications we do, we use every day in our, uh, in our lives and probably some of you might have noticed. And these applications do require machine learning uh, algorithms, machine learning methods uh, for you to assert. Okay, for instance, here on the left, here on the left corner, you can see a YouTube, you watch YouTube videos, mostly, you know, most people watch. And it does give you a recommendation based on the kind of video you watch. So based on your past uh, historical record, it gives you recommendation. So this uh, method is learning from experience, from your experience, and it is giving you recommendation. It is giving you recommendation. And uh, the email, when we, we send email, we check email every day. Okay, uh, and now uh, when we write email, we see some recommendation coming in. As soon as we write word word, we have you know some suggestion, almost two, three words of suggestion appear. Okay, so again, this is being suggested, being recommended based on machine learning. And uh, majority of us do access, uh, do go to Amazon, uh, Amazon or uh, you know, commercial free market website. So, uh, you know, we purchase and based on what kind of uh, merchandise, or what kind of substance we have purchased there, we get recommendations. So again, here, machine learning uh, algorithm is used. So machine learning is around you. We've been using machine learning applied application a lot in, in your daily lives, okay? Is that um, you, may not have used in your domain. So AI application, if we go domain specific, I mean, computer vision, uh, it has a lot of application in computer vision. I get tracking, identifying, computer vision means uh, computer is identifying face, computer is identifying human objects, et cetera. Speech and audio, okay, audio speech recognition. You might have used some application uh, of speech recognition. It's like you know, you're speaking and your voice is converted into text. And you know, the, the moment you speak some word, 
Okay, it is recognized when you don't speak the word, it is also recognized. So this uh, the speech recognition is utilizing machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms a lot. So, natural language processing. Okay, when we see um, the text, text when we it's like a Google, uh, when we give query and Google tries to find out a lot of uh, relevant searches for you. It does natural language processing. Okay, you click the scans, it gets all the, you know, all the query text, query data, and it tries to match it and try to retrieve relevant information for you. So this is natural language processing when you try to um, extract information or try to get some important information from the text. In, in civil engineering, of course, uh, these are the major problems or major tasks where, where you can apply machine learning or deep learning. Uh, designing, uh, designing, planning, construction, management, maintenance, analysis, and optimization. As in the in the uh, in my bio, it was mentioned that I did work in seismology. I was trying to uh, build a model to predict uh, to predict earthquake, for instance. Okay, so prediction is one one application of uh, artificial intelligence or uh, specific machine learning in design. So designing, planning, construction, management, maintenance, analysis, and optimization. Okay, so for these kind of problems, we can utilize a machine learning algorithms in, in your domain. Besides, uh, uh, civil engineering, okay, some other applications in, in other domains, of course, you may not be interested, but uh, artificial intelligence is being used in all sorts of uh, domains, as you can see, internet, medicine, and biology for, uh, for identifying uh, cells, for drug, designing drugs, for media entertainment, for security and defense purpose based detection and video surveillance. Satellite imagery, these autonomous machines like you know, uh, of nowadays autonomous driving. You might have heard a vehicle which does not have driver, a driverless car. It uses uh, sophisticated deep learning algorithm in identifying um, obstacles along the way. Now, uh, given the given the vast application of uh, AI in various domains of engineering and in various walks of economy, let's say all the players who play some sort of role in building economy of the country, AI is is uh, being utilized, is being used. Now, given this vast application, the market of artificial intelligence is quite thriving. Okay, as it has been predicted by some agency, okay, uh, Merrill Lynch Global Research, that the AI market will be increasing and will be increased up to $67 billion by 2025. So uh, many uh, industry players, they have started investing in artificial intelligence, investing that means getting product done, getting a developing product, you know, which utilizes some sort of artificial intelligence. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is almost every sector of industry, surgical, robo, agriculture, autonomous car, uh, drone, military, entertainment, laser, domestic robot, almost all sectors of economy. Now, uh, this is uh, the increasing market uh, of artificial intelligence. You can see this production is up until 2026, but you know, yeah, and you see the sharp increasing demand in AI. And therefore, okay, companies are have started investing in AI. 
Now, uh, these many countries have given a special attention to AI. They, they have framed their policies. They, their government has given some initiatives. They have invited technocrats to, to start thinking in the direction of uh, utilizing artificial intelligence in solving problems. So India, uh, our country, is one of the countries which has framed artificial intelligence policy back in 2000, uh, yeah, sometime around 2018, I suppose, yeah, 2000. So this is the National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence by the EPIO, okay, this is by the government of India. And the special focus was given in the promotion and encouragement of application of artificial intelligence techniques in various domains, in various domains of engineering, uh, and uh, in fact, various domains of economy. And uh, uh, Leading India was a project which I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation, Leading India, not AI was a government of India's uh, initiative, uh, which uh, was led by Bennett University. And we were also part of uh, this project. And, in, and this project, the artificial intelligence was, was promoted. And uh, we were personally involved in, uh, in utilizing uh, using artificial intelligence technique to some problems. OK, uh, some energy problems and health problems. So uh, a, diverse, a diverse group of uh, uh, individuals, uh, researchers, uh, was formed uh, in almost every university which was uh, playing, which was collaborating in, in this project. And uh, they have participated uh, some, in, uh, they have participated in, in promoting uh, AI techniques by offering workshop and giving workshop and by doing some research projects. So this is uh, this is third boom of artificial intelligence, as you can see. So that is why probably this uh, uh, workshop is also happening because of um, the rise of IoT, rise of artificial intelligence. This uh, the focus of artificial intelligence is uh, getting more and more. <clears throat> so this is third boom. Okay, first the two booms happened in you know, sometime around in 1960, 1980, but now. And this boom is just still on, this boom is just still going on because artificial intelligence uh, techniques have still uh, far to go, have many problems to solve. So what kind of problem AI can solve? Okay, when, when we talk about AI's, AI solving problems, okay, uh, complex problems, uh, when we think about these problems where you can you can bring some AI technique. Those problems are essentially divided into three categories. You can say detection problem, okay, detection, or you can say classification. You want to detect some uh, something which uh, which is abnormal, maybe. It's like you kind know, of uh, in civil engineering, you would like to know what is the fault coming, or what is the fault in the structure, in, in the building, etc. And prediction, prediction or forecasting. Second is prediction or forecasting. So prediction, now prediction when you try to uh, predict, you try to tell something in advance. You try to uh, tell based on historical data, the historical information, what might happen tomorrow. Okay, so prediction is where you think that prediction is going to help you, okay, then machine learning technique you can make. Uh, for instance, you know, if, if you talk about civil engineering, uh, like structured health monitoring, okay, this is one of the biggest applications I recently started you know, talking about this with uh, a PhD student, uh, sir, uh, 
to the service uh, is supervising a PhD student whose objective is structured uh, health monitoring. So uh, in, in this uh, kind of problem, we would like to know what problem a structure might happen in years to come or in months to come. So that if you're given a warning, you can do some preventive measures. You can do some corrective measures and you can probably uh, stop uh, some severe damage that can not only cause money, but also cause life. So if uh, you get that kind of warning, that kind of prediction, okay, a lot of things can be prevented. Third category of problems uh, can be categorized as generation when you create something completely new based on the existing things like you're creating some visual art, creating some new music, okay, some small, small, you know, store from different music, you can build a new music. Some small, small text, you can uh, build a new story, for instance. So uh, you're creating something new from the existing, from the available information, from the available data. You are designing something. So three specific problems can be dealt with artificial intelligence. And I'm sure uh, that these, uh, some of the problems I, I just now mentioned, these three kind of problems do exist almost in every walk of economy. Uh, uh, almost every domain of engineering, So, uh, so let's uh, focus more on machine learning. So I have shown you uh, the Venn diagram set where AI was, was displayed as a superset and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence because it is a group of uh, special kind of algorithm. And then we narrow down, if we go deep down a little more, we find deep learning. Deep learning is, is a special, another special group of algorithms. So machine learning, if we say, how would you define machine learning? Okay, the, the definition of machine learning is said uh, to be as the subset of artificial intelligence that is mainly concerned with the de development of the algorithm, which allows computer to learn from the data and the past experience. So some of the data should be there for machine, uh, for algorithm to, uh, to learn. So if data is available, that is considered to be past experience. So algorithm is going to learn from that available data. So the term machine learning was in fact, coined or given by author Samuel Martin. So that's, that's how, how does machine learning work? Okay, now, now, talking all about you know, the definition of AI and uh, the relation of AI, ML and DL, okay, it is often confusing, you know, people get confused what is machine, DL and AI. Uh, then the specific of these algorithms, these machine learning. So if you are to apply machine learning algorithm, how does it work? How we go ahead okay, in applying machine learning algorithm for your problem. For your problem, that may be detection problem or classification problem, that may be prediction problem, that may be creation or, or generation problem. So any problem that you, you encounter in your domain, you can think of applying machine learning. So machine learning system learns from historical data builds the prediction builds the prediction model and whenever it receives new data predicts the output for it. okay so uh, a machine learning model is getting here machine learning algorithm for instance it is using some historical data some input data and it is being built and once it is built, it uses a new data. And when this new data 
is being given to the machine and machine is responding um, with an output and that output is um, reasonable that output is the output that you wish for okay then machine learning model is working okay so the accuracy of predicted output depends upon the amount of data as the huge amount of data helps to build a better model which predicts the output more accurately so uh, in, if you wish to apply machine learning algorithm for your problem, problem again, I will repeat the problem uh, like uh, detection or classification problem like uh, the second problem is like uh, in a prediction or forecasting. And third is generation. So if you're willing to apply machine learning algorithm for any of these problems, this is the life cycle you will have to follow. The life cycle of machine learning. That's the fundamental steps of machine learning. So first, you will have to gather, gather, gathering data. You will have to gather data. You will have to acquire data. Now, once you get the data, you do prepare data. Okay? Data preparation is is not a simple task. So you you're getting data from some source. Then you're preparing data, and after in the preparation, you also do data wrangling. And data wrangling is like cleaning and and uh, uh, you know examining the data whether your data is good enough to go for a machine learning model. Okay, you do analysis. You do analyze. The fourth is anal analyze data. You do analysis of the data. Now, why do you do analysis to pick a suitable machine learning model? for your problem, for your data set, for the data you have. And once you do that, then you select some data for your model building, your machine learning model. So artificial intelligence is uh, here I mean, in, in terms of machine learning is like building a machine learning model. And that model is being trained a training a model is like an experimenting uh, model. Once the model is built, it is tested with the new set of data. And once the data is performing with the model uh, created, okay, uh, with, uh, with acceptable accuracy, with acceptable performance, then your model is ready for deployment. Deployment uh, signifies that your model is ready for use. You can deploy model at, at, the, at the place you are you're, you're thinking of applying the model. Okay, you are you are working on. So these these seven these seven steps. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, seven. This life cycle is being followed in the process of application. So now gathering data. So let me go a little uh, bit uh, more specific uh, to all the stages of this life cycle. Now gathering data, you gather data from different sources, files, database, internet, mobile devices, okay, all these sources that generate data. Okay, our mobile generate data. And uh, many sensors, okay, sensors or IoT devices, all these are data sources. You, you start gathering information from these sources. Now, depending on your application or your problem, your, your big data, if you're working on um, some uh, sentiment analysis, you could probably use internet. If you are working on social media data, then of course, internet data, files, database, you will be using. If you are using um, some uh, images or some uh, voice, data, then you may use your mobile devices. And if you are using for health monitoring, okay, health monitoring of the machine or health monitoring of the building or health monitoring of the machine, the okay, health can be of any instrument. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if you are using, if your problem is health monitoring or health diagnosis of machine building or, uh, or human body, then uh, you you install sensors, you 
place sensors there. And those sensors record information and those informations are stored. And if it is IoT, okay, it can be sent to, to some location where data can be visualized, data can be, can be viewed. Okay, so you will start gathering data from all these sources. Now, when, when you get data from these sources, these data uh, mostly are in different formats. Okay? They, they, if you are using sensor data, if you are uh, using internet data, those are in different formats. So when you uh, use for your problem, these data, you will have to integrate uh, or you will have to come up with a suitable mechanism to extract these data uh, so that you can use some computational method. Okay, ultimately you need some numbers. Okay. Uh, machine learning or AI uh, is nothing but an algorithm, which uh, a computing technique, which will use uh, numbers as an input and it applies, it, it does some mathematical operation. Okay, so algorithm is nothing but, you know, set up or series or sequence of mathematical operations. So once you get the data in numbers, it applies um, mathematical operations and uh, you get uh, the desired outcome. Uh, desired outcome. So uh, when you collect the data from various sources, so those come from different format, those raw data, they need some exploration. They need some pre-processing to clean up, pre-processing to, to arrange the data, okay? arrange, arrange data that you get. And uh, when, when you are able to read data okay, coming from various sources, okay, gathering the data, reading the data, and arranging, okay, it's, uh, it's a part of uh, machine learning cycle and also typical. Most, um, you know, some, most of the time it, for real world application, mostly it is difficult, uh, particularly if you are using for health, um, health monitoring. Okay, for any condition or health monitoring, any any system or machine. So um, once you are able to read the data, then uh, you also would like to examine data whether data is relevant. Okay. Sometimes data is too noisy. Sometimes data is being duplicated. Sometimes data is not valid to okay, what you are looking for. So these are the issues that usually come uh, with the data. Okay, with the information, data is information, with the information that you get from the source of information. So these things must be resolved. So data wrangling are the techniques uh, or under this step, you do all the missing, you do get rid of the missing information, you do get rid of duplicated values, you get rid of invalid data, and you also try to reduce noise, uh, which was, uh, which was unavoidably picked during the acquisition of the data. And uh, once data wrangling is done, your data is now clean enough to go ahead with the application of machine learning algorithm. Then you do the data analysis. In the data analysis, you try to visualize your data your information. There are tools and uh, tools and techniques through which you can visualize data. And by analyzing, visualizing the data, you can guess what sort of algorithm we would require in our problem. Okay? Because machine learning is is a set of algorithms. Which algorithm you are uh, going to use for your problem? Okay, that that need to be that need to be guessed based on data analysis. Okay. And once you analyze the data and you picked uh, the suitable machine learning method, uh, methodology or the algorithm, you start a you know, training process. So the process of building machine learning model is called training. Okay. So your model is getting ready okay, with the trial. So for the, for the trial, your, if you have a data set, if you have data, uh, then uh, some portion of the data you keep for the 
model building and remaining for the test. Okay, so you use some portion of the data. Suppose if you have, um, suppose you have eight thousand images. Okay, I'm giving you example of you know, images. Okay, uh, I cannot think of any civil engineering example at the moment. Uh, okay, so suppose you have eight thousand images. Uh, here and those images are of dogs and cats. Okay? And you will have to build a machine learning model or a model that will classify this image. Okay? Image which is which has cat and image which has dog. So out of these 8,000, you pick 7,000 random images for training the model. So you pick 7,000 to train the model and remaining 1,000 on the left, 1,000 for testing. Okay. So you divide your data set or the data the information that you get for, for model building, you divide it into train and test. And by several experimentation, by several okay, uh, trial, once you build your model, it is ready for deployment. So once your model is behaving well uh, or performing well on the test the data, then your model is considered to be ready. Okay, you, you, you have now a model and that model can be used for deployment, then you can deploy. So for instance, if you are using um, for structure health monitoring and uh, a, 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 predict, a prediction model, then once your model is ready by considering all the health uh, uh, parameter or health uh, indicators that you would like to use to predict the structure, um, then uh, your model, once model is built, you can use in the monitoring system. So that will, uh, that model will keep um, telling you that what is the condition of the structure. Current and the future, it will estimate what the likely problem it may have. That model is deployed now. So once your model is built, you can use in your problem. So machine learning <clears throat> is uh, uh, divided, uh, as I said, uh, artificial intelligence is nothing but you can guess, you can understand like, you know, this is a collection of algorithms, collection of computational methods. Now, in machine learning, which is a subset of our AI, now machine learning is also can be divided into three groups of methods. Even machine learning can be divided into three groups of methods. Now, three, one group is called supervised, second is unsupervised, and Four and third is reinforcement. Okay. So reinforcement learning in a learning algorithm is mostly used for gaming or for uh, robotics application. But supervised learning and unsupervised learning are used for various other problems, various other engineering problems. Okay. So some of the problems I, I will show you in okay, some slides. So supervised learning and unsupervised learning, we will see here. So if you talk about machine learning here, okay, machine learning has a you know, supervised group of algorithm and unsupervised group of algorithm. Now this supervised algorithm, supervised, it is usually used for which problem? For regression problem. Now regression is a problem of uh, prediction. Okay? Regression uh, is done for prediction, for forecast, and for classification. When you have multiple class to, uh, to automatically classify by the ML model, then you use supervised learning. So for two is special, uh, for two specific kind of problems, regression, uh, for regression and for classification, supervised learning group of algorithms are fundamentals. And what are these algorithms? These are some names I will again, uh, read them out for you. 
unsupervised and the second class of algorithm or second group of machine learning algorithm is unsupervised. The unsupervised algorithm is used for dimension reduction okay, and for clustering. So these are two uh, you know, problems which unsupervised learning can be. Now dimension reduction is important when we have um, so many input data, so, so much of variety of data we have. Okay, so we, at some point we need some dimension reduction okay, because uh, dealing with large amount of data sometimes is not uh, computationally very efficient. Okay, so we would like to do dimension reduction first. Okay, so we use the dimension. So unsupervised learning is used for dimension reduction. And for clustering, yeah, clustering, when we have a large amount of data and we would like to know what <clears throat> are the uh, numbers or the, what are the data which have similar uh, nature, okay? which, are, which have similar nature, which are uh, similar characteristics. So based on similar characteristics, we would like, we like to group the data. Okay, so grouping the data in, in a large and diverse data set is called clustering. We would like to make cluster. Okay, so it's, it's like you know, in a big university campus, we have uh, a cluster of MCA students, we have cluster of engineering students, we have cluster of faculty members, etc. So different group. We are trying to group the similar characteristics data with unsupervised learning. So these two. The third is is another uh, group of our modern group of uh, machine learning algorithms, which are also supervised and unsupervised to some extent. So deep learning algorithm, some of the deep learning algorithms are supervised and some of the deep learning algorithms unsupervised. Okay, so the, uh, these uh, deep learning group of algorithm is rather uh, newer than the machine learning because deep learning started only 15 years ago. <coughs> okay, so supervised learning, what supervised learning is, I will just... Uh, In which you know the data, you know the data uh, by level. It's like uh, if I say we have uh, 88,000 images of uh, dogs and cats, the same example we will give again and again to, to make you understand the concept. If we have 800, 8,000 8, photos of uh, dogs and cats, then we already know which photo or which image is of whom, so which photo is dog's photo, which photo is pet's photo. So if you have uh, image label or tag like that, okay, then we say data is legible. Okay. So if supervised learning applies, is, is applied only on labeled data, when you have information uh, the information that you have and uh, the output or the, the objective of the data is also given there, is also given. So it is also understood that you have input and output of the data. So in, either you can say data is labeled or you can also say input and output. So if you have labeled data, means dogs and cat example, okay, if you say data is labeled, Okay, so label means we already know uh, that image belongs to which, cl which class. So image says it is cat's image, so we know. So, so cat's, cat class is already known. So label will make you make, make your output known. So based on the information of input and output both, we try to build a model. So in fact, uh, the aim of a supervised learning algorithm is find a mapping function to map the input variable x and y. 
right? So suppose if you have a function uh, y is equal to fx, okay, a function, then y um, you try to map between. So y is the output and x is the input. So you must have both the information, but you don't know what relation is between y and x. You don't know the function. Okay. If I say y is equal to x square, then we know the function and function is a square, a square of x. But if, if we say y is equal to fx, f of x, so f is the unknown function. So with uh, supervised learning, if you have the information of y and x, then you can establish or you can find the function f. So this is the supervised learning. The supervised learning uh, acts like uh, uh, acts like a teacher, okay? It's like someone is trying to learn with the help of someone and under the supervision of someone. And if we have the output information already, then we are learning with some supervision. The model is, uh, model takes the information of the output. So labeled means, for instance, that this is the data. Okay, now this data is of different shape. So this is triangle, this is square, this is hexagon. So there are three types of data in this data set. And these three data set are labeled. So we know all the squares are labeled with square, triangle are labeled with triangle, and hexagon are labeled with hexagon. So with this, this information, so this is called output, this is input. Both information is given to the machine. Okay, uh, the algorithm is taking both the information and it is trying to build a model. So when the model is built, okay, then you give a test data. And the test data, if model is good, the model is well-trained, then this model will predict the square as the square, triangle as triangle. Okay. So input and output. So label data or in other words, you can say you have input and output. Okay, so these are the steps involved in supervised learning. Okay, you get the data, you clean the data, uh, you split, you split the data set into training and test. After the training set, you try to build a machine learning model, and the machine learning model you choose from you know from the set of let's say 100, uh, 100 algorithm and you, you choose one algorithm depending on the problem you're going to do, you're going to solve and the nature of the data you have. Okay, and then you evaluate the accuracy of the model by providing tests. So your, your model is built, you're giving test data and if test data is giving you satisfactory results, then your model is built. Okay, I will uh, take a small pause just to say everything is okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I hope everything is okay. okay. The connection is fine and you're there, you're listening. Okay. So these are the steps involved in supervised learning. Now, next is, now these are the Algorithms, some of the algorithms you use for, uh, for us, you know, uh, under the category of supervised learning. So if, you're, if you see your data and you know that your data is labeled and uh, your data is labeled and your data, or in other words, your data has input and output both information, then you, and you have a problem of prediction, okay? then you think about using any of these algorithms. So linear regression, regression trees, non-linear regression, regression, okay, some of the algorithms that you can utilize. Spam filtering, random forest, decision tree, logistic regression, support information. So unfortunately, we cannot talk about all these algorithms because these algorithms, of course, have sequence of mathematical operations. So I'm just giving you a name. If you are interested, okay, you can explore these information, these algorithms if you have 
some problem to tackle by machine learning and the problem I just now mentioned. Those, uh, some of you probably are dealing with uh, some problem which uh, require some machine learning algorithm or AI algorithm. So uh, classification is another problem which is used by supervised uh, learning approach and spam filtering, random forest, decision tree, logistic integration, support back to machine learning. Okay, these are few. Okay, these are few algorithms I'm listing out there. There are many more, okay, and many more are coming up because you know people are involved in, in research and they are coming up with uh, different algorithms every day. Uh, if you go to find a research paper in any of the development publication, you will find you know some algorithm is appearing in almost every week and some very good algorithm which can be uh, tackling some of the issues in machine learning models. So it is easier to say that model is training, but when, when we get down and start training model, it becomes a tricky and sometimes uh, it is time consuming. So with uh, supervised learning, if you are applying supervised learning, what are the advantage and what are the disadvantage? Of course, advantage since supervised, it is more stable, okay? Uh, it, it gives you exact idea that how your model is going to be built because you have labeled data and labeled data has additional information of labeling. So your job is easier. Okay, so this is the advantage. And disadvantage, uh, you can say supervised learning model are not suitable for handling complex tasks. Okay, because uh, in real words, most of the time, you know, we get data which is unlabeled unless someone starts you know, labeling data. Okay, we are in, in often a time when we do Google search, okay, Google um, asks uh, us to, uh, you know, point uh, our, our detect, it, it, it pops, you know, some set of images and often it asks, um, points all the stairs, point all the crossroads, etc. So Google is uh, asking us to label data. Okay, we are identifying. So Google is, you know, ingeniously using their users to do data labeling. Okay, so in real world, when when we start, you know, getting data from uh, IoT device, from sensors, those data is not labeled. Okay, unless we unless human is going to label that to to identify okay, when uh, when some events were happening. So in real world, most of uh, the information that we get are not labeled. Okay, so for complex problem or for real world problem, many real world problems, supervised learning yeah, is not um, suitable because the only reason data is not labeled. So as soon as data is labeled, you can use. So unsupervised learning. So supervised learning, you, you saw uh, that it has additional information of label of the data, okay? Unsupervised learning approach does not require a label, okay? You just have, you have some data and just you give all the data to the model. So there are many, many cases in which we do not have label data and need to find the hidden pattern. So we have data, data is not labeled, but there is a pattern. If those patterns can be identified, we can do classification, we can do detection, we can and we can do prediction, etc. Can be possible. So to solve such type of cases in machine learning, we need unsupervised learning techniques. So the goal of unsupervised learning up here uh, down is to find the underlying structure of data set group that data according to the similarities, okay? According to the similarities. So if we have, uh, okay, uh, thousands and millions of data, we go around and finding similarities. Now for similarity measure, we have uh, some statistical or mathematical formula, mathematical approach we need to, uh, we need to adopt here to find the similarity. And then we present, and we present that data set in a compressed format. So unsupervised learning does not require a label. 
So for instance, in this group, in this data, suppose we have an image, this is unlabeled data. We don't know who is a cat, who is dog, but if you give this image to the machine, it machine will try to learn. Machine will try to find out the similarities between these two objects, between these objects, and it will group accordingly. Okay, so there is no label. This information is missing. You just give the data, the prepared data after data wrangling. Once your wrangling is over, you analyze the data, you pick the algorithm, and you chose some unsupervised algorithm to, to, uh, to work with. Okay, then you uh, do this classification. Okay, this is a grouping, you grouping. So it is not categorized and corresponding outputs are also not given. So here, the data is not categorized and corresponding output. Okay, so there is no output here, only input data as you can see. The learning algorithm and input data and input data is grouped into cluster. The, no, the name is cluster, okay? Data is grouped into cluster. So machine is making cluster of dog, cluster of cats, etc. Okay, it's like an, uh, imagine in the university, we have all the individuals, teaching staff, non-teaching staff, student. Okay, uh, if uh, our sum of the information, like you know, what we do, what is our age, what is our, you know, um, where we come from, etc. These information, if it is given to the machine, machine learning model, machine learning algorithm, it tries to group, okay, similar, group of people. So it will characterize, it will make a cluster of uh, faculty members, it will group a member of engineering students, and then, okay, all, all the cluster will be formed. Okay, so cluster is like a grouping of the similar characteristics, elements. And it, it happens because uh, and it machine learning algorithm does try to find out the similarities. Yeah, and find, find the hidden pattern in the data set which is given for clustering. So it has uh, this clustering, clustering uh, application is, is uh, done by a supervised learning. So there are, uh, these are some unsupervised learning approach or unsupervised algorithms. K means KNN, hierarchical clustering, anomaly detection, neural network, principal component analysis, independent component analysis, F, priori algorithm, a singular value decomposition, et cetera. So these are some unsupervised learning I'm listing out here. Yeah. And again, I think all these algorithms have a sequence of mathematical operations. These are algorithms, they work step after step. So, okay. Now, what are the advantage of uh, unsupervised learning and disadvantage? The one advantage is it can be used for complex problem and for more real world problem because, you know, it does not require any data. And disadvantage is unsupervised learning is intrinsically more difficult than supervised. Okay, because you do not have one additional information. Though. So it is, useful for complex problem, but at the same time, it is also complex to, uh, to design, to, to implement. Now, uh, now let's see one example of supervised learning. So now we see, we saw uh, two, uh, I, will, I will again repeat, we saw the machine, or we saw machine learning, and we saw two main groups of machine learning algorithm, supervised and unsupervised. Now, supervised learning is used for prediction, for classification, and an unsupervised learning is used for clustering. Now, suppose if we have a problem of prediction, we want to predict, we have some data, and uh, we'll have to learn, we'll have to build a model, and then we would like to do prediction if we get similar kind of input. To that model. So linear regression, it is it is done by linear regression. This is the simplest problem that we can 
game can share learning. <clears throat> so linear regression is um, is the process or is uh, is the operation of which is uh, which is done to find out the relation between independent variable and and dependent variable. Now, independent and dependent variable are technical ways. Okay, so you have input variables huh? and you have output variable. Okay, so output variable is called dependent variable, which is depending on this independent variable. So suppose this is x-axis and this is y. So, okay, you can imagine. Uh, a function like y is equal to x squared, for instance. So x will be dependent variable, uh, x will be independent variable, and y, y axis is dependent variable. Okay, so suppose we have a data and we don't know what is the relation between the input data and output data. Okay, now with the machine learning, with the supervised learning, we, we can establish what is the relation, what is the function. So this is called linear regression. When we try to map the input data to the output data, when we try to find out the function which is unknown, okay? and that function which can relate output and output and input. So uh, this is uh, called linear regression. Is all about you know fitting or finding the function which is nothing but a linear function. That is why it is linear. Okay, this is the simplest example of course, this data can be more complex. And if data is more complex, then linear is going to be changed with multilinear or, or non-linear, then our job becomes more difficult to find the suitable function okay, that can fit the data. So if we have this data, we can fit it by a line. Okay, of course, there will be some error, of course, okay, but we can come up with a line which can most suit to, to the given data. Okay, so now if we come, if we are going to come up with a line okay, that can fit the, the data that we have, okay, we can we will have to come up with line equation. And line equation is y is equal to mx plus b, okay, or c, yeah, here b. Okay. Now m is slow, x is the variable, okay, independent variable, y is the dependent variable. Okay, so we know x, we know y, but we don't know what is m and b. That's the thing, that's the parameter. These two parameters will have to estimate the slope and the cross section. So these two parameters have to be estimated. And what are the, how you are going to do that? Okay, you, because you have data, you hypothesize, you think, okay, because you have a data, you plot the data, X and Y axis. And now you try to find out a line which can most fit that data. And for that line, you need to find out the slope and cross section. Okay. So that slope is theta one, okay, the definition, and theta zero. So you have to find out this. So you will have two parameters, theta zero, theta one, to find out. And with the help of cost function. Okay, cost function. So cost function is the real data, okay, the real data minus the estimated data. Okay, because you start guessing, okay, you start guessing theta one and theta's value. Okay, now this guess, this guess is um, happens with uh, with some pattern, okay, with some equations, with some mathematical direction. It doesn't just happen randomly. So theta zero and theta one. If we don't know, we start guessing. So okay, what is theta zero and what is theta? So we put this value, put theta zero and theta this value here. We get some value, y value, and then we subtract from the original value, okay? Because we have y and x, and we get some error. That error has to be minimized, okay? So that that is called cost function. 
So the cost function is calculated by the original function minus predicted uh, predicted function okay, or predicted value. The original value minus predicted value. So this cost function is um, is created, and this cost function has to be minimized. So this is the process of identifying theta zero and theta one, which can minimize this error. Okay, so the, the value theta zero and theta one uh, we get when this value is minimized, it is not going to change it uh, further. That value of theta zero and theta one will be the suitable value for the line that we are trying to fit to the given data. Okay, and, and this, okay, this. Uh, how, how do we go? Because theta at zero and theta one's value must be starting at some initial point, and it should be, you know, it should be changing. Uh, how do we change? Okay, it's like, you know, we are trying to minimize the cost function. And cost function minimization is like, you know, going uh, down in a, in a slope, uh, in a slope, in a hill. Okay, so if we are, suppose you are here at the time here, when you were here, the error is, is more. And then you will start walking down, 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 you know, you're walking across the slope and you got the minimum value. From here, you're not, you're not going up, okay, you got the minimum. Okay, so at here, your error is minimized. And at this point, the slope and cross section, what you get, that will be your line. So this slope, because you will have to go through slope. Okay? This is called gradient descent, because we uh, calculate gradient. Okay, We are descending across the gradient. So this gradient has to be calculated. How do we calculate this gradient? By derivative. Okay, When we um, do derivative, the first order derivative, it will give you slope. Okay, so this uh, concept of calculus is used here. Okay, so at every point, at every theta and at theta zero and theta one, the slope is calculated. Okay, and if slope is descending continuously, okay, then we are changing theta zero and theta. Now, otherwise, we are not changing. Okay, so we are following in in one direction, and the direction will lead us to the minimum cost value. So this derivative is uh, calculated. If uh, you have more uh, more parameters, okay, then uh, we go for you know, more differentiation, you know, higher order differentiation. So it's like you know, if we started here at this point, error was here, the slope was something, and we calculate the slope and we keep changing the value of theta zero and theta one. If slope is not uh, leading us to to descend, then we are not changing theta zero and theta one. If it is descending, then we, we change theta one and theta zero or m and c. Okay. And there will be a time when it will reach to the bottom. Okay. At that moment, this that error will be will be fine. So here w and b. If you have two parameters to adjust, then okay your your error, this is the error graph, okay? And that error is depending on W and B, W and B like theta zero and theta one, the slope and cross section. So it has to be minimized here at the bottom. So we'll have to reach there by changing uh, <clears throat> slopes and, uh, and cross sections value. So this is an example. This is a, a, a real life example, let's say. We have uh, so many companies, okay? this is only few data, here. There are only few data, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple. Okay. <clears throat> now, these companies, they are, they are doing their sale based on a radio campaign. Radio campaign, it's like calling campaign. So if they are investing uh, $37.8, okay, Amazon invested and their sale, this percent, you know, were high. And Google invested this much money and they're saying 10.4% were high. So this is the data. 
So this could be your X axis and this is your Y axis. So sales is Y and radio campaign, the investment the money, which was invested on radio campaign was X. So X is independent variable and Y is dependent variable. Here, the independent variable is radio, okay? radio investment and sales, sales is dependent variable. So Y is sales and X is radio. B is bias, okay, B is used uh, to you know, the cross section. Okay, so this is uh, try to be found out, M and B. Okay, that will fit this, this data. If we plot this, there are more data. If we plot this, we will have you know, data scattered in X, Y axis. So suppose, yeah, all this information are here, radio, this is sales, so all this data is here. But we don't know which line to be fit. Okay, all those lines are possible. Okay, which line is suitable? We don't know. So we apply this gradient descent approach. Okay, we establish the cost function. Okay, uh, this is the cost function. This is called mean square error. Okay, so the error is calculated from the original value and the estimated. Okay. So estimated and original, and then it is squared and sum. Okay, all the data points and is the data point and we calculate the error okay if error now the gradient is calculated gradient is calculated and at every value of m and b <coughs> it is updated okay, at every uh, value of m and b this is calculated now since we have two parameters here f uh, M and B, okay, you we will have to do partial differential equation because both are changing, M and B. So that is why we'll have to do partial differential. So in fact, uh, we will come up with a Jacobian here. Okay, this is a Jacobian here. B F I B M, B F I B B. This is uh, um, partial differential equation, okay. Now there is another term here, learning rate, you can see. So now M value is being changed, M and B. These two parameters have to be estimated. So the parameters or the, the variables that you will have to estimate to build the model, that have to be updated okay, from some initial value. So M and B, you start with some initial value and you keep updating that. And learning rate will determine how fast you are, you are updating this M and B. Okay, so this is the slope which is being identified, uh, which is being estimated by the gradient. And if gradient is in the descending uh, direction, then M is being updated, B is being updated. But, and it is being updated with how much quantity? And that quantity is determined by learning rate. So if learning rate is high, M will be uh, updated with higher value, otherwise okay, reasonable. So uh, depending on how fast you you try to uh, uh, you try to find the solution, you define a learning learning rate. Okay, usually, uh, alpha is kept between zero and one. So, okay, all the iterations. Okay, it is run iteration one, 10, 20, 30, 30. So these iterations. After these iterations, we have the cost value. 43.28. Okay, earlier the, the error was more and then it starts decreasing, decreasing, and it reaches to put 3.28 and iteration 30. So after this, okay, so this line, if you simultaneously you are plotting as well, this uh, line okay, on, on different values of M and B, then your line you know, will be shifting. But uh, at some point when the error is the lowest and error is not going much uh, lower or higher, okay, it is, it is known as your error or your learning curve is converged. Okay, your error rate is converged now. It is not going below than that and it is not going higher than that. So it is converged, it is giving you a stationary value. So you can stop there, your learning process is done. So at that moment, 
what M and B you have, that will be the final uh, parameters, uh, parameters map. Okay, so M is given 4 point, uh, 0 0.46, and the section, cross section is given 0 0.025. So this is the best suited fit for this data. Okay, so earlier we did not have any information, but now we have a relation between sales and radio, um, radio campaign investment. Okay, so estimating M and C will give you. Now, for any value of radio, you just give the value and you will have a sales value. Now, you can predict sales for any radio's value. So, once your model is built, you can, you can predict sales value for any given radio. Okay, so this was uh, the supervised learning. Now, unsupervised learning, okay, supervised learning was used for prediction. And once you, your model is built, you can predict. You can give input, you have a... Now, in unsupervised learning, you don't have information of the output. You have only data, okay? You have data, only data. And those data have some hidden pattern. That's for sure. Data has some hidden pattern. Then only it can be grouped. Okay, you, you will try to group. So suppose you, you have this data, okay, the balls and bats. Now, now this data is not labeled. Okay? Data is not labeled. But if you give this data to uh, the unsupervised learning approach or unsupervised learning algorithm, it will try to group all, group all the balls and all the bats. So here we have our data set plotted x and y. The information on the y-axis is about run Cisco. This is run, and this is weekend, and the x-axis is about the weekends taken by the players okay, here. Now, when we plot the data, we can see a clear separation between the class of batsmen. Now, this bat, the bat represents batsmen, and ball represents ball. Okay, so how much uh, wickets they have acquired, so of course, Ballers will be getting more wickets than runs, and uh, batsmen will be getting more runs than the wickets. So you try to you know, cluster it. So cluster one, okay, it tries to group all the batsmen and then okay, uh, all the all the ballers. So the algorithm is trying to group, trying to cluster of the similar um, similar nature data. Cluster. Now, k-means is the algorithm which is used to do the clustering. K-means is uh, is a widely used algorithm in supervised, unsupervised learning approach. I mean, it, it uh, works on very heavy data set as well, and there is more data set both. Uh, and uh, this is very efficient algorithm. Now, k-mean is is applied for for this approach, let's say, okay, for this, uh, for this data set. Now it is calculated based on the centroid assumption. Okay, the, another uh, technical word here comes, which is related to this algorithm, okay, centroid. Centroid is a center of the cluster, let's say. So if we know that the uh, given data set has two classes or two clusters, then we imagine we have two clusters and we don't know the location, we don't know the position. Uh, we, we just start with some random value for two centroids. The centroids are the center of the cluster. So centroid is given some random initial value and then centroid gets updated. Okay, that's the process of doing unsupervised learning. So this is the centroid. So this is imagined. This is the centroid for this cluster. This is a centroid for this. Two random centroid is, uh, is estimated, is, is given. And then from the centroid, the distance is calculated. Now, we talked about the similarity. The cluster is the group of similar nature of the data. Now, how this similarity is calculated? Similarity is calculated by obtaining the distance between the data, okay? The distance, and the distance is called Euclidean distance. 
Okay, for instance, if we have data one here, one data here, we try to calculate the distance between these two data. If this distance is less, then similarity is more between these two data. If distance is higher, then similarity is higher. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So there are uh, many more uh, distance measures, okay, than the Euclidean distance. But the Euclidean space or Euclidean distance is widely uh, is, mo is most of the time used for uh, the problems. There are other other measures. Is uh, given the complexity of the data. If data has more complexity, more classes. Okay, so we may use different measures of, of, of distance. Okay, so Euclidean distance is one measure for distance, one method, one formula to find out the distance between two points. But okay, we have uh, other distance like uh, Manhattan and you have here a square root at the Okay, this, this one, again, it does not have a square root. Okay, so we have other distance measures. So that's the way this algorithm flows. Okay, it starts with, uh, uh, with some initial centroid, it assumes. Now centroid, um, sometimes uh, or most of the time, you do not know that how many types of, how many clusters uh, your data may have. Okay, how many clusters? So you, you, you don't know. So for that, you have this approach to, to find out the number of clusters available in the data set. This is called elbow point. By applying this elbow point, you get an estimation of the different uh, cluster available in the data set. Okay? So in unlabeled data, we don't know. We know nothing but the data. We don't know how many types of uh, uh, the cluster are going to be. But with the elbow point approach, we get an estimation of the available different clusters in the, in the given data. Okay. So it tries to find out the elbow point. With the elbow point, it gets an idea that the given data set has these many number of clusters. And if it gets that idea, then uh, the, that many centroids are created. And uh, then those centroids keep, you know, uh, keep uh, updated okay, as the algorithm goes further. Okay? So if it has uh, two clusters, then we'll start with two centroids, and the centroids are given some random number, and from that centroid, all the distance of the data uh, uh, of the available data is calculated. Okay? So one centroid will keep, you know. Uh, some data and the another will give some data. And then uh, after calculating this distance, the original centroid is estimated. Okay, the original centroid, when it is estimated, the error between the, between the, uh, the estimated, um, uh, estimated and the initial centroid is calculated. So that error is trying to minimize. So uh, this is, uh, the step one is for uh, finding the elbow point. Okay. Elbow point is the, uh, yeah, th this is the distance. Uh, it is called, uh, um, second it is here. Yeah, it is sum of the square. Look at this error. So this is the centroid and this is the data. It is the WSS is calculated. And WSS is calculated for, you know, from starting first cluster, second cluster, third cluster, and it is plotted, okay? And once it is plotted, and then we'll see the kink, there is a kink. Okay? After, after kink, you don't uh, see too much changes in WSS graph. So you, you get that elbow point, that kink. You get. Okay? So here you get two, it may, you know, you can go ahead with forming two clusters in the data. Okay, so let's assume that there are uh, there are our delivery points. These are our delivery points, and we start with uh, and we through the elbow point we have found that there are two clusters. So C one and C two. 
there are two centroids. If we find that there are two clusters, C1 and C2, two centroids are, are uh, taken and they are given some value. And from that value, all the distance are calculated. So all the uh, close points will be associated with C1, okay, and the closer points associated with C2. And once all the distance are calculated, okay, for C2, for C1, then the original C1, C2 are calculated. Okay. So the original is just an average, average, uh, average centroid. Okay, all the distance and divided by total number of grouped elements. So those are calculated. So the initial centroid and the original centroid, which is calculated here, then the error is found at the C1 and the C you know, X and C2 and the next C2, okay, or the original C2, this is found. And that error is, uh, is minimized. So compute the actual, actual centroid at the data point from the first row and reposition the random centroid to the actual centroid. So you, you get the, the actual position uh, of the centroid and then the, the actual position of the centroid will act for the new, for the new centroid. And again, that process begins. So compute the actual centroid of the data point for the second group, reposition the random centroid for the actual centroid, this is the second group. And once the cluster becomes a static, the k-means algorithm is set to be converged. And the final cluster with centroid C1 and C2 shown here. So that's how you know, can, uh, can group the algorithm, uh, group the, the data, which is given in a given particular <clears throat> Okay, so we have seen the uh, one uh, example of uh, super, uh, supervised learning, uh, regression analysis, and regression analysis is done for prediction. And one algorithm in unsupervised learning approach, that is k-means, and k-means is used for us. So this is machine learning. And when we go deep down uh, in, in the graph, which uh, uh, or the, the Bain diagram, which I uh, showed uh, at the beginning of the slide, okay, which AI was there and ML was there and then Beal. So if we go a little more down, we will have deep learning uh, algorithm, set up algorithm. So deep learning is another uh, group of algorithms which are used for the same purpose, for the same purpose as machine learning algorithms might be used. But the only difference is deep learning can deal with a large amount of data sets and more complex data sets. And the approach it follows is artificial learning. I uh, will not be spending too much time on, on artificial neural network because I know that you will have another session especially devoted on artificial neural network. Okay, I will just uh, give you some you know, brief um, that artificial neural network is uh, in fact the deep learning because uh, as, as you increase the number of uh, layers in the hidden layers, okay, you make your algorithm more and more deep. Now, artificial neural network has, is inspired by um, our brain structure, okay, uh, the neuron structure. And uh, the terminologies which uh, it has, okay, like cell body, this is one basic neuron, which uh, get connected with millions and billions of nodes inside our brain and they process information. And at the end of the process, you get you know, some decision, some output. So with the same concept, it, it, uh, it mimics the structure biological neuron. It tries to connect a neuron to neuron and it tries to compute. Okay, so this is the input layer and this is the, the hidden layer and this is the output layer. So this is all artificial neural network. So input layer receives the input and output layer will give you output. So as uh, deep learning can be both 
supervised and unsupervised. But uh, neural network is most suitable for supervised uh, learning in which you will have data with the output information or with the label information because you have the output layer here with the output information and the input layer you have with the input information and you try to learn, you try to build this model okay, with the algorithm, with the optimization algorithm. Here. Okay, so one, one neuron can be, uh, can be modeled with, uh, uh, with this um, model, okay? In which uh, you will see the, the connection, connection, the information from one biological neuron to another biological neuron passes through exon. So we imagine this is exon, okay? This information is passed. And the cell body, cell body receives information from different uh, branches. Okay, from uh, different inputs, let's say, and all these informations are get uh, uh, added here, and uh, then some some decision is made here. Okay, and then after the decision, okay, the information is passed to the other uh, neuron. So here uh, you get all this input added here, summed up, and then you get a transfer function which is applied on some value. And this transfer function gives one decisive value okay, on the uh, some value. And that information is passed to the next layer of neuron. Okay. So um, this input, uh, inputs are, um, okay, sometimes you, you get the input as, uh, as you get the data, okay, depending on the data you have. But uh, in case, if you are using uh, artificial neural network for structured health monitoring in which you have uh, many other parameters to monitor and for monitoring uh, in order to monitor you have to acquire uh, data signal and those signals you cannot directly give um, input to, uh, to the artificial neural network model then you will have to do feature extraction okay. so um, it's it's up to the data Data is data is uh, with different attributes, with different information. Now here, uh, if data is not uh, so simple, it's not in tabular format, okay, like uh, the uh, like the, the example which I showed you are almost in tabular format. Uh, are they are they were in tabular format? Okay, you had. You know something in y axis, something in x. But if you have some signal or image as data, then um, those are not in table form. Okay, you will have to do feature extraction. Okay, you have to extract valuable information or important information by applying some feature engineering, some feature extraction technique. Okay. And uh, okay, those features will give you characteristics of the data. For instance, okay, if we have, if we are going to do house pricing prediction, then what kind of features we must have? We must have how many number of rooms, house has, how much the area, how much the air pollution it may get, distance from the facilities, main facilities, etc. These are the features. So these features we must have. Okay, so if we get these features as it is, okay, from the source of data, then our job is simpler. Otherwise, we'll have to do uh, feature extraction. But in case of speech recognition or cancer detection, this is another problem. Uh, video recommendation, image classification, okay, we may we will have to do feature extraction. Okay, an image, we have pixel values, we have curves, we have edges, we have okay, different features. We have color, we have blurness. Uh, image has many information. Those in, information must be extracted, must be taken. Okay. So those, so that is called feature extraction. So if your data does not have, uh, uh, does not have information which can be directly utilized for machine learning model, then you will have to do feature extraction. 
And all those features then are given here as an input and the build model. And then, so these are uh, certain uh, terminologies which are used in application and that would come. Uh, it, uh, I guess it will be again uh, repeated uh, in, the, in the other session. And uh, the, the parameters in in artificial neural network, which you will be establishing, you will be finding by training. Okay, the terminologies are same as in machine learning. Okay? You will have to train. You will have to find the parameter of the model. So, like in linear regression, we had slope and cross section across. Okay. Uh, section as parameter to be estimated in neural network we have weights because one neural one neuron is uh, is connected with another neuron by some weight it's synapse that's synapse it is in biological term it is called synapse so synapse is mimicked as weight so we'll have to calculate weight we'll have to estimate weight okay so for uh, Instance, if we have single neuron perceptron model, perceptron, single neuron perceptron model. So in single neuron perceptron model, it accepts the outputs, inputs, it sums it, and it applies some transfer function. And that transfer function may be linear transfer function. And that gives you some output, and that output may be relevant. If it is not relevant, then you will start training. Okay. So for instance, if you have uh, uh, size of house, if you are doing uh, cost of house prediction, then your input is size of house. So size of house is, is, is determining cost of the house. Engine, if you have different problem in which you are trying to estimate cost of the car, and the cost of the car is being estimated based on the engine capacity. And the cost of computer, if the cost of computer is estimated based on the processor speed, Okay. So this is the input parameter and this is the output parameter. So you have Y, you have X, okay. and the relation between X and Y are being established with neuron. Same thing you can do with linear regression. The linear regression can be done with a simple neuron. Okay, so this example is about this, um, <clears throat> Uh, about the cost estimation of the computer, okay, based on the processor speed. So you have uh, some information is given. Now this is this is supervised because information uh, is given. So this is you can apply supervised learning because you have independent independent uh, variable and dependent variable. So speed is independent variable. Cost is dependent variable. So the speed is being okay, determining the cost of computer. So this information we have. So based on this information, we would like to predict what will be the cost of 3.5 gigahertz processor. Okay, so this is again simple linear regression model. So this is this can be done by single neuron, single neuron model, okay, in which you try to estimate weight. So here weight is being estimated. Weight. Okay. So some initial value you will start with. Okay, initial value is two thousand, for instance. Okay, some initial value you will start with, and this is the input one, and um, this is your weight. Two thousand is the initial weight. You can start with any random value, any random value, and then you you multiply it, and you have the price. So the price of uh, the price of uh, one gigahertz is eight thousand. Okay, it's not 2000. 2000 we started with, but then we found this estimate the error. What is the error? Error of assumption and what is the actual price? So actual price is 8000 minus 200, 2000 equals, uh, it was predicted. And then we calculate the error, and this error is now used to update this weight. Okay, so it is updated. Now all these all these input bar, input values are scanned, are are traveled to minimize error. 
error in prediction uh, over uh, over the actual value. Okay, so it keeps on. Okay? So weights is being updated based on the uh, error. So error, as you can see, is being given this. So um, when we scan, once we walk all the input data, first epoch is completed, okay, first epoch. And then again, if error is not satisfactory, we again start from the beginning. It's from one gigahertz, one point four one, and it goes on. So uh, up to fifth epoch, we'll have to continue. And at fifth epoch, we have error zero. Okay. So here, the information uh, we are able to do the minimization of the error. And here, whatever weight you get, that weight will be the final model value. <clears throat> so here, uh, we'll get the model. So weight is. 31983, that will be the weight. Uh, the weight. Uh, weight is 9138. 9138 is the weight. Okay. That will predict the price which will have one more zero. Okay, so uh, that was, uh, this was um, the only processor speed. So what if we would like to consider other parameters? So if you are going to consider other parameters, okay, then your problem will become more complex. It will become complex, more complex, that you cannot even do, you know, this calculation on panel paper, then you need a theorem to do that. So now input is screen size, hard size, hard uh, disk size, RAM size, battery, all this. And, and also some bias element, okay? So bias element is only determining the output. It does not relate to input. Into parameter. So there is a, always in a weak loop some bias. Okay, <clears throat> so if your input parameter is or the input variables are increasing, then your problem will become more complex because one single neuron is getting so many inputs and therefore W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, and B. So you have five and six parameters to be estimated, not one. Earlier in exam, in earlier example, we had only one weight to be estimated, but here we have five, six weight, weights to be estimated. Now this, this is done by, now this training process, again, we need a cost function. It's like in machine learning algorithm we have seen, the same neural network is also machine learning. So we need cost function. Cost function is the estimated error and and the the uh, you know uh, the estimated uh, value of the output and the actual output. Now this has to be minimized. MSC. Now again the same approach gradient descent. It has to be um, it has to be uh, uh, differentiated. Now, since we have so many W1, W2, so there's so many partial differential, uh, partial derivatives will appear okay, for every W1, W2, W3, W4, W5 foundation. So, um, okay. Uh, this is, uh, you know, if you increase number of um, inputs, then of course, matrix, uh, the weights are going to increase. And okay, so in, in, in the calculation behind, you know, when we do calculation with the computer, we do, in fact, matrix, uh, matrix multiplication for the same form of matrix multiplication. Um, this uh, problem, okay, the, the problem which we um, saw, it is a linear problem, but when we have output and input related with some nonlinear function, then problem becomes more complex. Okay. So for nonlinear problems, we have different activation function or transfer function uh, that we can use uh, to tackle the problem. These are some nonlinear patterns though usually see in the data. Okay. So like when we do we were doing linear regression, it was very clear. 
okay, a linear line, a, a line can be fit there. But okay, um, sir. Yes, yes, sir. May I request you to expedite your session because it is consume more time. <laughs> then our participant need lunch break, sir. So okay, okay, okay. In five so, minutes, uh, you can continue. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Almost done. Yeah, thank you. Just, uh, just two more things. That's it. Almost one or two minutes. Okay, so uh, I will skip these because these are a little more technical details. Uh, at the end, I will only tell you the uh, uh, tools that you will utilize, that you think of utilizing when you have machine learning or deep learning approach to be implemented for your problem. So here are some of the tools, some of these software tools, which are uh, open source. You can like TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, uh, and, uh, and, and Apache. These are, uh, these are open source. Here in R programming is part, again, uh, Tableau. Uh, Tableau, okay, uh, Tableau is not purely free, but okay, to some extent, uh, they give the application free trial. Uh, so these are the uh, tools which uh, which you can uh, uh, which you can use if uh, you have a problem to solve with machine learning or deep learning. Okay, um, not to mention MATLAB. Okay, we are familiar with MATLAB. MATLAB uh, has uh, a, a library or a tool for deep learning. Whatever was. these tools are, are much better. Okay, so yeah, uh, for large data, uh, if you have you know, structured health monitoring, et cetera, IoT device, you need uh, a high computational machine. And initially, you know, some, some months ago, we received a supercomputer from which goes, which will assist uh, in a research of uh, yeah, deep learning and machine learning, et cetera. Okay, so I think I'm done here with uh, what I wanted to do. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful and rigorous lecture. And uh, there are a lot to learn, but you know, basically we are from civil background, so a little bit was bouncer in the last session <laughs> but you tried your best and we tried best to learn but the way you taught the seventh slide cycle about machine learning and supervised learning unsupervised learning regression so we learn a lot and still we need to learn a lot our participants have few questions maybe quickly we can take it sure. uh, yeah. Uh, Guru Raj, you can ask if you have a question. Guru Raj Twildar. Yeah, you can directly speak, Guru Raj. Yeah, you can speak or uh, I'm, I'm right in front of chat box. You can type if you, uh, although we have, yeah. Yeah, let me over consume our time. <laughs> Any questions, participants? Okay, I think uh, Aditya, sir. Yes, sir. Have you given rights to participants to unmute themselves? Yes, sir. Okay. So if they have no question, uh, you can uh, stop sharing, sir. Dinesh, sir. Okay.
So, Aditya sir. So for you, sir. Now, sir, visible? Uh, next slide. Yeah. So, thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time, energy, and expertise to us. And uh, really, it was very vigorous lecture. And we found that it's a huge ocean and we need to learn a lot. Thank you once again yeah. for sparing your valuable time, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Glad to be part of uh, this STDP. And uh, I hope uh, some information uh, that I rendered here will be useful by the participants if uh, they are going to address uh, some problems which can be uh, efficiently dealt by machine learning and deep learning or AI in totality. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank instruction you. for the participant, our next session is at 2.15. So I request you to join five minutes earlier. So at 2.10 p.m. Yeah. Thank you. Meanwhile, you may sign off and we will join at 2.10. Thank you.